Hey y'all, Imri with Tactical Rifleman here. I got my brother Rich. Rich is a canine trainer, uh, Double H Canine. And we got Esther here. Uh, today what we're doing is we're gonna show you and talk a little bit about uh, the importance of integration training for canines with a tactical team. Rich and I run this training for mainly for law enforcement, home protection dogs, that kind of thing. So Rich, tell us a second about Esther. Well, Esther is a two-year-old uh, Czechoslovakian Shepherd that we imported uh, just about a year and a half ago. Uh, and she's uh, been a great dog, great temperament, has a really nice off switch. In other words, she can hang out with us uh, while we do stuff like this, but also she has great drive and temperament to do the type of work that we've been discussing. We've been running the shoot house today, you and Carl and myself. Uh, and, and essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to get uh, Esther, who's relatively new to this whole thing, we're trying to get her integrated and used to having, uh, you know, other guns around, motion, a whole mess, and there's people around her. Um, what's, what's the deal? Why can't the dog just, you know, run with a team? Well, the, the biggest mistake everybody makes in training is everybody goes too far too fast. So what we've done is we've laid all the groundwork beforehand with Esther, and that groundwork would be her obedience, her grip work for bites, her muzzle work for muzzle punching and fighting, and then gunfire neutralization. We also started having her work around other people in not a tactical scenario. In other words, walking with people, being out in groups. So she understands that when we hold things up, it's not something she needs to chase or try to bite. She's just hanging out with us and being calm. And then we start to slowly integrate her in with one-man operations, two-man operations, three-man operations, all the way up to whatever eight or 10-man tactical team, whatever you're running. We just keep adding guys until we get to the end of the endeavor we're trying to accomplish. So let's, let's put this into a home defense kind of okay. setting right now. Okay. So, because that's, that's kind of part of her role in your family. Sure. Or, or what you're training her to be her role. Yes, Esther is our, is our family's home protection dog. So the first and, and most important thing for us is her to have this off switch again. I always talk about an off switch uh, of the dog being able to hang out with us at home, to watch TV at night or work in my office, but then also have the, the genetics, the drive and temperament to do bite work, to search independently on her own, things like that. So our goal as a family, since my wife and I are both retired law enforcement, you know, uh, our home defense plan involves weapons. So we wanted a dog that could be gunfire neutral. So we've done a lot of work with her being neutral to gunfire because we're going to search or clear our home together. So Esther is an integral part of that piece of the puzzle. You know, a lot of people will buy a protection dog that's not right for gunfire neutralization. They bought a home defense dog. Uh, and they didn't think about gunfire. They didn't think what they were gonna use as their home defense plan. So we started first with, what is our personal home defense plan? And then we wanna put our dog in that plan so we can be successful. So what we're doing today is we've been moving around, right? Carl and I were playing the, the tag team. Uh, and then we got, we got Rich and Esther uh, running as part of the stack. And so what we're doing is, you know, we're clearing and we're getting her used to the fact that we're moving around, we're doing our work, and then she's got to get called up front uh, for certain places we want to send her ahead of the force. Uh, she's got to come back. She's got to like not bite us. Can I not? I'll find him. Uh, she's got to know that it's us. One of the things uh, in addition is after the bite that we were working on, you know, we're, we're kind of storming the guy and we got to get him under control while, uh, while you know, her teeth are sunk in him. And, uh, and so that's something we're, we're still working out, right? I mean, let's... A absolutely, you know, again, you know, it's Esther's, you know, she's only done this a couple of times uh, as far as adding multiple people. So the biggest thing for us today is as the team was moving up, we gave you just a little bit of space before we moved up too. So she's using uh, more of an obedient session for her, watching the guys move, being obedient to me, being called up, wrapping the door and going in and finding the guy. And then once she's on the bite, we're trying to make sure that she stays calm on the bite that the bite, the grip is up and in. In other words, she's pushing in on the guy. And then that way the other operators, as they move up with the dog, they can go hands-on. We don't have to worry about the dog coming off or regripping or actually biting a, uh, uh, an operator just through redirected aggression type thing. It's hard enough for us to kind of get a handle on it, us, us as the humans, to get a handle on all that motion and who's going where and less talking and you know possible bad guys around every corner. Um, and, you know, in the dog world, they say, 
you know, your, your tension travels both ways up and down the leash. Yes. Um, so your dog's going to feel your tension and vice versa. Um, and so when you have a whole team, how does that affect the dog? Well, it affects the energy of the dog. You know, if the guys are excited and moving, and of course it's, it, that dynamic uh, event already is causing the dog to be excited. So what we do, again, is laying that groundwork from the beginning. We brought Esther into multiple, multiple houses, the shoot house, regular houses, training ranges, and taught her to be calm first before she's allowed to go do what we want her to do. So then as we integrate people, she stays calmer and calmer. Even though the guys get a little more excited, she's able to control herself, look to me for direction. And today we was even getting the operators to resend the dog as well. If you come out of the room, if Esther was searching ahead of us and I was searching and clearing another room, if she came out of the room, operator could redirect her to go back and search for again. And that's part of becoming a tactical team. So can we talk a quick second about the whole noise factor? Sure. Because on a tactical team, you know, I mean, you're, you're maybe trying to move, you know, more quietly before the contact, after the contact, obviously everything changes in right. terms of noise. Uh, how does that work with the dog? I mean, you know, a lot of dogs, uh, especially in the law enforcement world, a lot of dogs are very barky. They're loud. They just want to go. They know they're getting to work here. Right. Again, we go, I go back to that word groundwork, that phrase groundwork. If you pair an associate, dogs learn through association or operant conditioning, right? So association is if I came in here and let the bad guy run in, in the bite suit and sent Esther in right after him and gave him a bite, every time she came in here, she'd be excited thinking she was going to get a bite. Well, we did just the opposite. When we go somewhere, we teach her to be calm, to lay down or sit, to focus on us, and then we let her go do her job. So she doesn't get to do what she wants to do until we get what we desire, which is her to be calm, quiet, engage with us, and then we can ask her to go do those things because the genetics are already there. She knows how to bite. She knows how to do what we want her to do. We just got to implement it into the endeavor that we're trying to accomplish. So once a dog knows the work, can anybody just buy a dog and, and that's it? The dog does the work and... <laughs> I wish it was that easy. It, it's, it's countless hours of training. You know, once we sell a home protection dog to somebody, we offer sustainment training. We come back into this nice facility we work with a dog uh, clearing rooms. We go to the gun, the range and do live fires, all that kind of stuff. It's an ongoing basis. It's, it's not, you just can't train a dog for one event and never train it again and expect it to perform when you need it to. It's just like us, you know, shooting is a perishable skill. If you don't shoot, you go back to the range, you're not shooting as well. So we need to make sure that we're hitting all those pieces of the puzzle with Esther to keep moving her forward in training. Not only is she going to get better as she ages or in with training, but then we can add more things to that training as we evolve. So that's really, you know, all those things you're saying, that's really what's cool about our setup here. Yes. Uh, you know, our school, Rich's school, it's all here in the same building under one roof in Louisville Armory. You know, and so we can, in the same, in the same session, we can go from the range to the shoot house, uh, you know, even to the dojo and uh, whatever we want. We can find dope outside and do all those things just right here. Man, we, we're, we're truly blessed. We have an opportunity to go from an obedience arena uh, in, in our training facility to do dry runs, to do simunitions, to do live fire, to do tracking, detection. Whatever you want to do, we can do it under one roof in the same day with no travel, which is very, really cool. You know, one, one more thing is, what would you say to somebody who right now, you know, said, hey, Rich, I want to get a home defense dog. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of people don't understand the involvement in this process and you know how much work on yourself it is before you even start dealing with the dog. It's absolutely a lot of work and then the first thing you need to do before you get a dog is to decide what is your family's home defense plan going to be. Are you going to use sheltering in place? Are you going to learn to clear rooms by yourself? Are you going to involve your family? Are you going to use firearms or, your, or baseball bats? What is your home defense plan include? And then you can get the dog that's right for that plan. And then you have to realize that it's going to be a lot of work, train, it's ongoing training, and, and you have to keep the dog fresh if you want him to perform well. So you don't just get a dog, you know, that's been trained by a professional. Uh, that dog has to train just like we do. Rich already said this, right? If you don't go on the range and shoot a bunch, your trigger work goes out the window, right? Your shooting goes out the window. It's the same thing with the dogs, but it's not just training the dog. You have to train with the dog daily. Yeah, well, at least weekly. You know, we act, that's what we are for sustainment training with all of our packages that we do. Uh, we want people to come back. We want them to stay fresh and current to make sure that, that they haven't formed any bad habits because it's easy to go out 
and set up a scenario training on your own, but then create some type of training scar that you weren't even aware you were creating. And we don't right. want that to happen either. We want to make sure that they're moving forward and their dog is going to perform the way they want their dog to perform in those times, those moments. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, check us out. Every Friday we put out a new video. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.